Hello, Jack. How you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. And for those who don't know you... My name? Your name? Is Jack Flanagan. Okay, and how long have you been an artist? Oh, probably my entire life. I really have not been very much good for anything else but <laughs> that, to tell you the truth. Perfect. <laughs> That's great. And basically, uh, what's your art background? Uh, my dad sold steel. I have an older brother. The ping pong table in the basement was always a viscerated animal in formaldehyde, and, and I was given oil paint so we didn't kill each other. Um, so my brother's presently president of the American Neurological Association, and at 12 years of age, I no longer could paint with oils the rest of my life. I decided I wanted to paint at some point when I was in high school. And switched to watercolors. I applied to Tyler School of Art at the University of Pennsylvania and uh, Arizona State University for graduate school. I was accepted to both, but Arizona State gave me a full teaching assistantship and a scholarship to teach watercolors there for four and a half years while I got my advanced degrees. Okay. From there, I've taught several institutions, universities, colleges, done a gig for the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, 50 years. So this, I still teach at Cal State, uh, San Bernardino campus in Palm Desert. This will be my 50th year of teaching. Wow. Watercolors next semester. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Thanks. And uh, you, want to, you want to tell me a little bit more about your body of work? Or? Um, I tend to, I, I paint out of my head. I, uh, I will paint on uh, premise, uh, like plein air painting, but all my images are uh, an attempt to get somewhere near photo realism and an impressionist kind of uh, bent, uh, but uh, strictly from my head and observations. So what inspires your creativity? Um, I think I just really enjoy the inference of color, the understanding of light, the, the subliminal understandings of shape relationships, linear atmospheric perspective, you know, just all of the things that, that art involves uh, seem to be like toys on a, on a carpet. And uh, it isn't, I, I generally still paint probably eight to ten hours a day, every day, seven days a week. And uh, earlier in my life, I paint 12 hours a day. So you're definitely motivated to create. I, I think probably, I tell you the truth, I never learned to read until I was 14. I was so dyslexic. Um, so I, only, I always understood the world of visual arts and spatial relationships, as many people with dyslexia do. Um, when you deal with the right sphere of your brain, primarily, you uh, tend to find delight in illusions and images of escape. Now, speaking of that, what is your strongest influence on your work? Oh, God. Many people, probably. Uh, I lost my father when I was pretty young. I've had some great mentors. Uh, Dr. William Peterman I worked with as a very young man who was guest conductor for the Chicago Symphony, conductor of the Apollo Choir, the largest choir in the world. He was 25 years head of New Trier, so I'd sit in the office and have a smoke and Charlton Heston and Bob Newhart and Margaret McCall and just being around people, fishing without a straw box, first chair violinist, you know, it doesn't matter what your degree or discipline or uh, specific interest is in following the pursuits of fine art, so it's just wonderful to be around people that share similar feelings, freedom of thought, freedom of uh, investigation. So therefore, it's just kind of like fish in a stream. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing if you just uh, have and possess that, that particular kind of thinking. Yeah, that's perfect thinking. Now, how do you define your success as an artist? Um, I've, I've been very, very blessed, like I said, to be around a lot of wonderful people, uh, people that are done phenomenal things in the art world. I've had students that have gone on. Uh, one of my students was the director of the MoMA, one of the 
another famous institute out east. Um, I, I'm proud of the people that I have worked with. I'm proud of the people that I've taught for all of the years that I have. Um, I think I'm influenced by, I've taught art history as well for my entire career. And uh, just, I think as you get older, you might understand that in finding appreciation in all different kinds of people's expressions is probably the most important thing to me. Yeah, has the thing that I find most satisfying. Wow. Good. Has your style changed over, over time? Oh, yes. You know, to, yeah. <laughs> and being an artist, you'll look at, you'll paint on something and then you put it away. And in my home, I probably have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of canvases propped up against the wall in different rooms and such. And, there's certain times, even in your own head, when you look at something and you say, wow, I should have done this. And I'm not sure that anything is never really complete until it, uh, maybe your time's up. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Perfect. Now, um, how do you seek out opportunities as an artist to show and sell your work? Uh, most recently, uh, I've been involved Primarily with teaching, as I said, and doing other things, sources of means to find, to find employment and, and gainful employment at that. Um, so, being an artist, you tend to do a lot of things. I was the first bartender in Emerson, Illinois, the home of the Women's Temperance Union. I've done that pretty much on and off throughout my life to throw extra cash in. Uh, when I moved from the Midwest to bring my family back, or take us out of the California lifestyle. Um, when I looked around the room and thought I was the only person that didn't possess three jets at the airport, I took us to a bit of normalcy in the Midwest. And in doing so, um, I, you know, I, I find great pleasure in in just being involved with nature. And we had horses. Got to go fishing, and you know. So uh, answer your questions when I was when I came back to the desert here because my wife hated the winter time. I was blessed to be asked to be the resident artist for the La Quinta Resort mm -hmm. in La Quinta, California, and they gave me a casita to use as a studio and one to use as a gallery. So the Hilton Corporation and I became very familiar and friendly for and still are. And uh, so now, if the weather is permitting, I go over to the La Quinta Resort, which is close to my home. And I know everyone there, and uh, I've developed quite a, a following of people over the five or six years I've been here. Mm -hmm. They continue to collect my art and are anxious to see me and be involved with me there. So it's a win-win-win situation. That's, that's a great situation. Yeah. Uh, now, what is your connection to Ontario and the surrounding communities? Uh, just last year, I jumped into the arena, the game of uh, showing my works outside. So at the at the uh, Polo Grounds for uh, Charlie Passerell and Henry Moore's Newsweek place at Indian Wells, uh, where they do the BM, PR, PM, Pariba, and the Polo Fields, and the Southwest Show, I believe it was the Southwest Show, a lady from Ontario who collects artists to show in the Ontario Airport, mm. saw my work and asked if I would like to have some connection with the Ontario Festival or the Ontario uh, uh, community here somehow. And so that's how my involvement came to this particular show. Now, now at least for my last question, uh, what do you enjoy most about participating in Ontario's Festival of the Arts? Uh, my wife really loved the cupcakes. She said she'd come back just for that, to tell you the truth. Um, I, 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 you know, the, the lady in the booth to the right of us is a very uh, professional ceramics person, and, uh, and it's been a delight to talk and, and meet with her. Uh, certainly sharing uh, similar interests with other people is fun. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a day, but it's, uh, you know, it's not as, as fun possibly as staying in my own head, in my own studio painting. But, you know, I might have seen too many ankles and knees and, you know, but, you know, it's a good day. It's a good day. Perfect. <laughs> well, with that, I'm going to say 
Thank, Thank you for coming out and speaking with me today. It's my pleasure. I hope Thanks. to see you next year. Thanks. And I hope to get to uh, Palm Springs again and, and check it out. I love the point. I haven't been there in, God, 15 years. Yeah. But I want to get back there. I really love it out there. So. Yeah, no. Uh, the, the, for, when I was interviewed for the position, I, I flew back out and they said Frank Capra will be the, uh, the last resident artist we've had at this facility. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's wonderful. You know? And they, who's Frank Capra? <laughs> <laughs> it's the black and white uh, TV uh, movie that was always on on Christmas Day that my brother and I would never watch. So it was oh, just, okay. uh, <laughs> but it's a wonderful place, great people, and it's okay. a magical uh, environment. So, okay. You know, I'm very pleased to be here today. Thank you very much for And having thank me. you for, for taking the time pleasure. to speak to me. Thank you. And now I'm, with that, I'm going to go get a cupcake. All right. All right. <laughs> Take care. I endorsed him, even though I didn't have one. <laughs> thank you.